Well, I'd, I'd have to say that it's, it's, I'm an unusual candidate for you to be interviewing because uh, the first 70 years of my life I was pretty much politically inactive and very apathetic about it all. But about three years ago, I, read a, I wrote a book, wrote a book, I read a book, uh, New York Times investigative journalist David K. Johnston. The book is called Free Lunch, and it's how the wealthiest of Americans enrich themselves at government expense and give us, leave us with the bill. And it did little things like indicated how uh, Warren Buffett had gained you know, a little bit of money, $100 million from government nonsense. How the owners of the Yankees and the Mets gained over a billion dollars paid for by government, by government expense from the taxpayer. How President Bush, when he owned part of the Rangers, gained about a half million dollars with the new stadium being built in Texas. Little things like that. And it also really got into the inequality of income and wealth in the country. And the whole thing just really made me mad. And I started looking around to try to learn more about it. And within a short period of time, I started writing a bunch of articles for, uh, uh, for an internet magazine called Op-Ed News. And I guess there are about 40 of them. Almost all in dealing with income inequality and, and political malfeasance, as I would call it. The, the shortest one I recall ever having read, having written was, uh, I basically said there were 435 people in Congress, 100 people in Senate, 535 people total. There were 35,000 registered Washington lobbyists. My ass was getting gored and so was yours. <laughs> that was the extent of my article. But. Occupy Wall Street came along and it spoke to the main problems of, of just total inequality in this country and the fact that Washington was owned by Wall Street and by corporate business interests throughout. And it didn't have a specific agenda and that appealed to me. It really wanted to bring out the problems that exist in this country. And if we don't fix them, we're just headed into a third world status over, almost certain to happen, but just I don't know how long it's going to take. And we have a chance to fix it, and if we don't work on it very, very hard, our grandchildren are never ever going to be able to see the kind of life that we're living today.